I've noticed that a lot of music producers waste tons of time trying to find the perfect business model that is going to work for them. So I'm gonna save you some time and stress by sharing with you the framework our producers use to build actual long-term sustainable careers. This will get you to think about it a little differently and you'll see that trying to find the perfect business model isn't really how most professionals think about this. If you're new to the channel, my name is Daniel Grimmett from Dark Label Music. My background is in building music companies and doing management services for producers. And we run a business support group for working music professionals, which is where the inspiration for all of this content comes from. There's info about that in the description below. So just about every day in my inbox, I get messages from producers saying things like, well, I want to do sync licensing because that's where the money is. And sure, there is a lot of money there, but most average producers won't make any of it. Or they may say, I want to sell beats because I could generate a ton of passive income. And sure, there's also a lot of money there, but again, most average producers won't make any of it. I'm not saying that to discourage anyone watching this. The point is that most average producers will watch a YouTube video, the YouTuber will hype up whatever business model worked for them, and then the producer will get really excited, go try the model, and then the moment it gets difficult, they'll quit, go back to YouTube, and get hyped up on whatever the next best business model is. They consistently have shiny object syndrome, which is easy for all of us to have, even me sometimes. But what happens is that they exert all of their energy in a bunch of different directions for many years and then eventually quit trying, which is why I said earlier that most average producers won't make money from any of the models. That is the average producer. So I wanna share how I approach this with working music professionals. The first thing is that we try not to get too hung up on one business model because the reality is that most producers who have a long-term career will at some point layer on multiple business models or pivot from one to the other as they get older. That's just probably going to happen. So instead, we use a framework for career design and all of the different business models fit into this framework at some point. I call my version of this framework the triple C framework. And no, I'm not talking about this triple C. That's a joke for you millennials who partied a little too hard in high school like I did. The triple C that I'm referring to here is clients, content, and catalog. Clients refers to anything where you are trading your time for dollars, engineering, producing a song for an artist or company, teaching, coaching, playing gigs, anything like that. Content refers to anything where you are using your likeness to build an audience of people who want to buy things from you, or you're using your likeness in combination with someone else's audience so that people buy things from you. This could be building a YouTube channel where people buy your beats and sample packs. It could also be a big producer who lets a plugin company use their name to sell a signature plugin. It could be a band like Polyphia who has a big social media following and people buy their tabs so they can learn how to play their songs on guitar. All of that would fall under this same category. And then there is your catalog as a producer, your music catalog. Here you are creating assets or songs that will ideally continue to pay you over time. So things like sync, royalties, placements, people using your loops for placements, advances, publishing, that is all generally based around your catalog. And down the road, you could even borrow money against your catalog or sell all or a portion of it, as you've seen some artists do recently. Those are the three C's, but let's talk about how to use this as a framework for your career. Check out the little graph that I put up here. I generally like to start with clients because it is the fastest way to some income. It's not fast, but it's the fastest. And most of my producers will start working with independent artists or little companies and charge anywhere between $400 to $4,000 for various services that they offer. It's a great way to get some cash flow coming in, but it is a lot of work. So it's not super leveraged because you are trading your time for money. And even though you love making songs, at some point, most producers get burnout only doing client work all day. So that leads us to content, building a little audience or using your likeness to generate income, basically like what I'm doing with this YouTube channel. And this is probably my favorite because it's where producers can really launch their own businesses that they control. And 
these businesses can get pretty big. Some of the ones that I work for do millions of dollars per year in revenue, and they were started by a regular producer who didn't already have some big name. But with more leverage, it means it's going to take more time. It's going to take longer for you to see any results. And it also requires a lot of other skills that aren't just making music. Leasing beats and selling sample packs, that typically falls into this category because in most cases, they are audience-led businesses. So if you've been at it for a while and not much is happening yet, then at least now you know why, and that's okay. And finally, your catalog, which under normal circumstances takes the longest to come to fruition, but it is the most leveraged. You've made a song once that continues to make money. And if you do that hundreds of times, then you have an incredibly valuable asset. However, you have to make a lot of songs over a long period of time to increase your probability and increase the value of your catalog. So this is something that you will build your entire career and along the way, people are going to wanna to come and take a piece of that. So when you are exploring different business models, plug them into this framework based on where you're currently at in your career and it will help you at least make smarter and more focused decisions that you should then stick to. And again, we work with people one-to-one -one on this stuff, so reach out if you have any questions. The link is in the description below. So final part of this video, we gotta talk about what to do if you don't want to do one or some of these three Cs. I do generally recommend to the music professionals I work with that they do all three and in the standard order because you can use each one to build the next one and they all kind of help each other grow. You just have more stability and more options. But you can do this however you want because it's your career and you just need to understand the pros and the cons and make sure that you're okay with them. For example, if someone doesn't want to work with clients because it's not as leveraged or maybe it's not as popular in the market they work in, then you'll lean into content and catalog, which just means that you'll probably have a bit of a delay before you start making any significant money. If someone doesn't want to do content, they just want to do freelance work and maybe work on their catalog later, that's completely fine. You can go out and make some great money doing that. But over time, just know that your client acquisition is probably going to get harder because you'll be competing more and more with producers who are similar to you, but they're more popular and have a larger reach. And if someone only wants to focus on catalog, which is the most traditional music industry way to do things, then that's totally cool. But you'll just have to be okay with having a little less control of your money for a while because typically for things like sync or placements or advances, a lot of other people have to say yes for a deal to happen. So you're a little bit more under the thumb of these companies, a &Rs, managers, publishers, whoever. So just keep that in mind. And if you want to learn more about the catalog side, then definitely watch the last interview that we uploaded to the channel here. So I hope that gave you a different way to start thinking about this. Again, reach out if you have any questions, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace out.